The views and opinions of the guests on the Wileener Show are those of the guests and are not necessarily the views and opinions of the hostess Wileener and or her co-host. <laughs> Charlie, Isaiah, Elijah, uh, 
zucchini, which we call, well, Zacchaeus, which we call zucchini. And uh, my daughters in law, Suzanne Cherie. And then, of course, my family out in the Carolinas. My dad, dad, happy Father's Day. Father's Day is coming up. And, and I want to say happy Father's Day. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it today. And I'm going to say it again next week. I said it last week. So I'm going to keep on saying happy Father's Day until it's all long gone, okay? All right. So happy Father's Day to the fathers out there. And especially to my dad. Alrighty, and I and I want to say also, uh, I I like to give a special shout out to uh, 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 Mercedes Thibodeau over at JD Bar Rider. If you need a car, if all you need is five hundred dollars, I'm telling you, I am telling you, believe me when I tell you, all you need is five hundred dollars and a pay stub, and you can go over there to JD Bar Rider and just ask for Mercedes. Okay, Mercedes has got it going on, and she is the one that's going to give you the hookup. Okay, go over there and say, Mercedes, Walina told me that you would give me the hookup. I got $500. <laughs> I hope I don't get in no trouble anyway. She'll hook you up. <laughs> Mercedes Tiffador is going to hook you up. Well, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. We have some special guests today. Very, very special. Y'all know me. Y'all know. The rubber meets the road on the Wally the Show every week. Every week the rubber meets the road. And I tell you, we got two weeks of two brand new faces that are going to be here to answer questions that you want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. And you know I have an inquiring mind. And y'all out there have inquiring minds. So we're going to get together and we're going to ask these gentlemen as many questions as we can for the next week. Uh, for this week and next week. And the gentleman that we have, we have non-denominational Christian. We have a gentleman that's non-denominational Christian whom I will be introducing to you shortly. And we also have a gentleman that is atheist, formerly Mormon, formerly Jehovah's Witness, formerly Catholic. He's got a lot to talk to you. We're going to talk to these guys and get some information on the teachings and beliefs. And we really want to learn more about the atheist portion of the belief. And we really want to learn more about the non-denominational Christian. You know, I've noticed that I've run into so many non-denominationals out here since I've been doing the show. And even before I was doing the show back in 2001. There's so many non-denominational, so we got to find out. We got to get to the bottom of this non-denominational stuff. You know, everybody got this title. Well, so many more people have this title of non-denominational, so we have got to get to the bottom of that. So anyway, we're, I'm going to introduce them to you shortly, but I want to say to the people that are viewing and listening, if you want to be a guest on the show, you have got to give me a call at 702 242 2100 that 702-242-2100 if you're interested in being a guest and someone to get back to you within 24 to 48 hours. And I would love it very much if you enjoy doing this, if you enjoy this show, please make your contribution to the Wally the Show. You can log on to WallyTheTVShow.com and there's a pay button right up there at the top. Click that button and drop your credit card information, debit card, whatever, and drop in, a, you know, uh, $20,000, $100,000. Oh, but then again, no, I'm not kidding. Hey, if that's what you want to give to the Wally the Show, I will welcome it. But anyway, you know, whatever you feel that your donation can be, $5, $1, $10, whatever, give to the Wally the Show, contribute to the show to help me to keep the show on the air. And I, I really would appreciate that very much. And you can also send your donation to 420 North Nellis Boulevard, Suite A3, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89110. Okay? 420 North Nellis Boulevard, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89110. So call the office if you want to be a guest on the show. And we're going to take a break right now. And when we get back from this break, we're going to move on and introduce our guest. And then I'm going to give the instructions to the callers. All right? So we're going to, uh, I, I'm trying to see if my if my guy wants me to go. He, yeah, he said yeah. Uh, I have an invisible man in here. Okay? I'm gone. You have bad credit but still need a car? Tired of riding the bus or asking friends for rides? Mercedes Tipido at JD by Ride may be able to help you. If you have bad credit, bankruptcies, repossessions, or are on a fixed income, Grab your driver's 
service license, your last two pay stubs, a utility bill with your name and address on it, and $500. And head on down to J.D. Byrider at 5600 West Sahara Avenue. Don't forget to ask for Mercedes. If you have questions, just give her a call. Mercedes Thibodeau of J.D. Byrider at 702-772-6211. Mercedes will do everything she can to get you in a great car with a great warranty too. Don't forget Mercedes Thibodeau at J.D. By Rider. If you are desperate for a car and a good one too, just call Mercedes today at 702-772-6211. Okay, we're back, we're back, we're back. Yes, indeed, we are back. And y'all know when I say we back, that means we're back. <laughs> Okay, I want to give some instructions to the callers. I have my guests here with me right now, but I want to give some instructions to the callers, okay? Callers, when we open up the phone lines, they're not going to be open just right away because you need to give us a little bit of time to get a little dialogue going here. And so that way you'll know what kind of questions you want to ask. And just listen, sit back and listen, and pay close attention to the things that are said and the answers that are given to the questions that I asked off the top. And then we'll go from there and we'll open up the phone line so that you will be able to call in and ask questions of my guests. And, of course, when you call in, please be respectful to my guests. Now, you do have the right to disagree. We can agree to disagree. You do not have to call in and say, oh, I believe everything you're saying. You can say, no, I don't think you're right. Uh, no, I, I disagree. I totally disagree. No, I don't believe that. Uh, prove it. You know, whatever. However, you have a right to say that because this is what the show is all about, to get the truth out. And guess what, everybody? Everybody says they have the quote, unquote, truth. Okay, everybody does. I haven't met anybody yet that says uh, what I believe is a lie. No, not at all. Everybody says they have the truth. And so whatever your truth is, that's what we're here to talk to you about is what your truth is. Because <laughs> the truth is everybody has one. <laughs> anyway, uh, call us. The phone number, the local phone number is 702-650-5588. That's 702-650-5588. I'll be quoting that number to you again later on in the show. Uh, for those of you who are watching online or across the country or another land or in another country or whatever, whatever, 800-366-8883. That's 800-366-8883. And like I said, be respectable. If you're on the line and nobody else is on the line, you can feel free to stay on the line and talk to us for a while. It's okay. Uh, if the line is busy, make sure that you give us a call back. Okay? So, I want to welcome my guest here today, and my first guest that I'd like to tell you a little bit about, his name is Anthony F. Harris, and he is a pastor, and he is the founder and senior pastor of the Power Center Church. He is the owner and clinical director of Discovery Life Management Services, providing mobile mental health therapy services for children, adolescents, adults, and families who are economically challenged. He is a licensed clinical social worker and licensed alcohol and drug counselor in the state of Nevada. He is a doctoral uh, student of social uh, uh, psychology at Walden University. He is, a, he is a seminar presenter with interest in religious issues, men's, he's on the right show for religious issues, anyway, <laughs> men's issues, race and class issues, youth culture and public policy. He is currently non-denominational, which simply means they are not a part of an organization or denomination. He, had, he was raised Pentecostal, Church of God in Christ, which means he believes in what happens in the Acts chapter 2 with the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We're going to get to the bottom of that part. They left that denomination because it was the best decision for his church to develop as they should. And I would like to welcome Pastor Anthony Harris. How are you today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. All right. Wonderful, wonderful. And thank you so much for taking time out of your, I'm sure, very busy schedule to come and be a part of the Wild Eater Show. Again, thank you for having me. All right. Wonderful. Now, uh, uh, Pastor Harris, I have another guest here that I'd like to take a moment just to introduce, if you don't mind. Uh, Jefferson Montoya is an award-winning singer-songwriter based in Las Vegas. Originally from Utah, Jefferson was born and raised a Roman Catholic, com com uh, complete with Catholic school catechism and being an altar boy. 
he left that faith at a young age and studied with the Jehovah's Witnesses, still seeking, uh, still seeking the truth. He abandoned that faith and was later baptized LDS, which is Mormon, okay, Latter-day Saints. And he served as an elder, was temple wed, and called to teach would-be missionaries. Jefferson believes in good without a God and has founded the No Harm Done Project, a project that uses music to combat domestic abuse of women. He is a student of religion and an atheist. Hello, hello, Jefferson Montoya. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Wonderful, wonderful. I am so glad that you came to be on the show today. I am so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy schedule to come and be with us today on the Wiley Unit Show. My pleasure. Okay, now, gentlemen, I want to know, are you guys ready for the rubber to meet the road up in here? Ready. <laughs> All right, Mr. Jefferson, are you ready for the rubber to meet the road in here? Uh, I will. I will be absolutely ready if I could just get you to call me Jay. Jay? I'll call you Jay. Thank I'll you. be happy. That's easy on me anyway. All right, okay? then I'm ready. All right, you ready? Absolutely. All righty then. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. We got the rubber meeting the road time in here. So I want to talk to these gentlemen about um, non-denominational. I don't know how much time we have before a commercial break, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started with some more information here that I want to share with you on the beliefs. Okay. I want to share with you on the beliefs first. Uh, first of all. I'm going to read some information. I, I, I basically do a little research on my own, and then, of course, after I do that research and I share it with you, everyone, then I ask my guests to elaborate or correct anything that I share. If it's incorrect in your belief or in your thought process or whatever you're teaching, you know, then you have the platform to make corrections to whatever I share, okay? All right, so uh, we're going to start out with non-denominational belief. Um, it, it says it's, it, it is quite simple. Now, this is just an article that I pulled up on non-denominational belief. Pastor Harris, okay. All right, so it is quite simple. A local church that is governed and regulated independently of any larger group, denomination, or church. Basically, it is, however it may be, internationally uh, internally organized its own ecclesiastical authority. When it comes to ecclesiastical uh, polity, I think that's polity, many non-denominational churches practice con congregational govern governance where the members of the church vote on the important decisions. The members delegate the day-to-day -day affairs usually to a pastor and an elected church board who lead the church together. Other churches vest authority in a board or a council of, of elders. These may be elected, but many times the board is self-perpetuating. Uh, While the pastor is charged with the spiritual welfare of the local church, he is ultimately answerable to the elders for everything. In other churches, the pastor is completely in charge of the church. There is usually a board of deacons or elders, uh, but their role is usually as a council of advice. The pastor is the ultimate authority. Theologically, most non-denominational churches are ev evangelical Protestant in doctrine. They are some liberal. There are some liberal Protestant non-denominational churches. While they may say they are non-denominational, or just Christian, there usually can clearly be seen a dominant theology in form, informing the pastor's preaching and the church's culture. For example, many churches are almost identical to Baptist churches, except that they do not call themselves Baptists. Many are identical to Pentecostal or Charismatic churches but they don't call themselves by those names. So that is a little brief 
on non-denominationalism uh, or non-denominational. Pastor Harris, uh, and I, I'm going to share the the atheist belief in just a moment. But Pastor Harris, do you can you would you like to elaborate on what I just uh, shared with the audience? I don't know. Basically, that's uh, that sounds about right. Okay. About right as far as uh, non-denomination, non-denominational non 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 Okay. Yeah. And so that's the same. That rule applies in your in your facility. Yes. Your yes. church or what? What? What do you call it? Do you call it a church? It's our church. It's oh, a church. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, basically, um, the church that I was I was raised in, uh, I, I will definitely like to say that I, I do love, I, I came out of the Church of God Christ. Okay. And absolutely love it. Okay. To, to this day, born and bred, I love the Church of God Christ, awesome church. Okay. Um, but uh, some things that you were saying in terms of uh, non-denominational, um, you know, we just had to make a decision what was best for us in terms of governing ourselves. So that was just the best best thing for us, but the Church of God in Christ is a wonderful, wonderful church. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So you you in in your non denominational church do you still practice some of the Church of God in Christ doctrine? Yeah, basi or yeah basically, behavior or yes. whatever. Yeah, basically it's just it's the same teachings, it's just it's different governance. That's all. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh tell me this now I, I have been told that there's people that a lot of the non-denominational churches come come up because of maybe some type of uh, disagreement or 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 they don't necessarily want to go along with the program of the complete total doctrine of that particular denomination. So then they make themselves non-denominational, but yet they still keep some of the doctrine. Is that what you, is that where you stand? Yes, because basically the 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 leaving of a church is not necessarily due to a disagreement of the beliefs per se, uh, but again, going back to the governing of, of the particular church. Sometimes there's some pastors that just believe that they'll do better off on them you know, with themselves than to be under that a particular type of uh, leadership or uh, you know governing. So they kind of withdraw from that. A lot of the teachings are still the same, uh, but um, it's just now that there's a more of an independent structure in terms of the the way the church is being run. Okay. Okay. All right, so uh, I, I'm going to share some more information here with everyone in relation to um, my other guest here, Jay. Yes, ma'am. I said that right, huh? <laughs> okay, okay. You know, I'm not the best with names, but but you made it pretty easy for me. So. Well, I like to be easy. All right, all right. Well, we go, we go see about easy here. Just a minute. We got to read what the atheists believe on the world leader show right here, y'all. Okay, here we go. Now you can correct me if I'm wrong, Jay. Okay, uh, or you can elaborate or add too, just like Pastor Harris just did for non-denominational. Okay, all right. Uh, when a person, when a person, now this is an article that I pulled, okay? When a person believes that God exists, they are a theist, okay? A theist. That is to say, they believe that there is a higher power who either created us or has the ability to greatly affect our lives. Atheists believe that there is no higher being. What do atheists believe? It is, it is a difficult question to answer because unlike most religions, atheists are bound by their uh, this disinclination or disbelief in ideology. Whereas most people who subscribe to a set of religious beliefs have a text, traditions, or other form of ideology to adhere to. Atheism cannot be classified in the same way that religion can because it is essentially the exact opposite. Where we classify a person's religion based on their belief in something, we attempt to classify atheists the same way based on their disbelief in a doctrine. That being said, atheists hold a wide range of beliefs and come to their own moral standards independently of God and of the church. The following are generalizations about atheists 
And it is worth noting again that because atheists do not have a standard to adhere to, there is very little to limit their theories and moral reasoning. What do atheists believe about how the world was created? Atheists tend to believe that the earth was created during the Big Bang, a scientific event millions of years ago that caused the, partic the particles in the universe to become ordered. Through evolution or the ability of creatures to gradually adapt to their surroundings biologically, we, we have seen the rise of a many different species of animal and plant life. What do atheists believe about morality? Atheists have many different influences from which they can derive their moral beliefs. Atheists draw moral theories from philosophers, political leaders, literature, and even religious figures, to name a few. It is a common myth that atheists reject the Bible as a whole, and this is generally untrue. Many atheists view the moral advice written in the Bible as good advice, much as they may believe that there is good moral advice in any religious tract or text. What do atheists believe about religion? Many atheists believe that religion is a greater hurt to the community than it is a help. While it is a myth that atheists are planning some sort of bloody revolution, it is generally true. I hope not, y'all. It is generally true that atheists believe we would have a better, more educated world if no one was religious. Atheists tend to believe that logic is more important than conviction, facts more important than belief, and material objects are more important than the soul. We're going to take a break right now. When we come back, Jay, you're going to elaborate on what I just said. Let's take a break. Go buy some sponges. We'll be you have bad credit but still need a car? Tired of riding the bus or asking friends for mm -hmm. rides? Mercedes Thibodeau at JD by Ride may be able to help you. If you have bad credit, bankruptcies, repossessions, or are on a fixed income, grab your driver's license, your last two pay stubs, a utility bill with your name and address on it, and $500, and head on down to J.D. Byrider at 5600 West Sahara Avenue. Don't forget to ask for Mercedes. If you have questions, just give her a call. Mercedes Thibodeau of J.D. Byrider at 702-772. Six two one one. Mercedes will do everything she can to get you in a great car with a great warranty too. Don't forget Mercedes Thibodeau at JD by Rider. If you are desperate for a car and a good one too, just call Mercedes today at seven oh two seven seven two six two one one. Okay, we're back with Mr. J, who is of the atheist belief. And J, I just read, for those of you who probably just tuned in, I don't know if you did or not, but I just read some information on atheists. So, J, I would like for you to elaborate on what I read and correct or, or you know, whatever. You Give me a brief synopsis of what atheists believe in your... Well, I don't know how brief I can be. From okay. what you've just read, uh -huh. there's very little that I can agree with. There's oh. very little that the atheist community on the whole that I've experienced would agree with. The, these sort of statements that are made, um, first, when you, when you try to take all atheistic beliefs and throw them in a bucket, you need to realize that being a theist doesn't mean that you believe in God. It means you believe in any God. And being an atheist means that you don't believe in a God. And so if you're without the belief of a God, that's exactly the same as a Christian who doesn't believe in Thor or Zeus or Poseidon. We're all atheistic. In the case of people who label themselves as atheist, maybe we go one step further. And it's not necessarily that we have a non-belief, but rather we have no reason to believe. Most atheists are very reasonable individuals. They um, tend to be greatly educated. For the most part, they, have, they know their faith that they were raised in and chose to leave better than most of the people who are in it very doctrinally strong people, um, and it's not, it's not that they trust their intellect more than they, than they trust other things. It's just that, well, it's okay to live your life not believing in things you don't have a reason to believe in. But some of these things are just absolute 
They tend to believe that logic is more important than conviction. The idea that you can have logic without conviction or that they're mutually exclusive is sort of silly to me. Um, you can have great conviction. I have conviction about my music, about parenthood, um, and I'm a very logical individual. The fact that fact is more important than belief, maybe that fact is more useful than faith. Maybe that's more accurate way to say it. There are plenty of things that atheists believe in. I mean, I believe in gravity. I, I know it's there. I believe that American Idol is a terrible television show. We have beliefs. <laughs> but, but you we, hold on just a minute now. Don't be talking about American Idol on the Wally the show, because I like American Idol. That's funny, because I'm talking about <laughs> no, atheism no, versus... No, it's <laughs> funny that priorities. Um, and, and this is absolutely idiotic. <clears throat> atheists tend to believe that material objects are more important than soul. Um, I really, I choked just trying to say that. That's just not true. Like, we, we may not believe in a soul, but it doesn't mean that we're materialistic, you know, heathenistic, just running around with our pants off sort of, uh, sort of individuals. This, this is really, really bad. Okay. Um, uh, so we, and I will agree that we're not planning a sort of bloody revolution, that at least I've not been invited, but a lot like a non-denominational church, you know, we don't, we're not a group under one big governance. So we don't, even, the, the, everything you say about, about an atheist is going to be uh, generalistic. Uh, the other thing, we, where do they get their morality? Well, one of the things that this left out, and while I did mention philosophers and some religious advice from, from texts, um, it ignored that there's a basic human morality that's coded within us. And, and we know this. We have tons of scientific examples. And we find it in other animals, too, in chimpanzee and dolphins, that there, there are some things that you just don't do when you're a social creature to your society. It's detrimental to yourself. It's detrimental to the society as a whole. You know, um, it's why ants don't bring poisonous foods sometimes into their, some sorts of poisonous foods into their nest, and we have to trick them. To, to take it in there. They know it's poisonous. They know taking it in will destroy their society. It's a sort of moral behavior that we have as human beings, and so that was excluded. Um, and there are plenty of great things in all religious texts if you pick and choose what you read. But if you take those texts on their whole, any one of them, on their whole, from page one to page Z, you're going to find that there's a ton of stuff in there that is not good for the community. It's not good for society, and that's the that's the atheistic stand. So, I would just say that there's as much moral good in the Quran as there is Dr. Seuss's starving Nietzsche's. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Okay, well, wait a minute. <laughs> well, let me ask you. The, the, well, let me ask the pastor. <laughs> let me ask the pastor. Pastor, do you use the B I B L E? Oh, absolutely. Okay, and what version of the Bible do you use? Uh, I personally use the uh, New King James Version. Okay. Jay, do you read the Bible at all? Or do you, what does the familiar. Bible mean to you? The, the Bible is a wonderful fable. It's a wonderful... Um, fable? Absolutely. That's what it means to me. It's, it's a great text. When I compare the Quran to, to Dr. Seuss, I can say that the Bible is has the same sort of positive impact on humanity that maybe Lord of the Rings does. Like, these are great works of literature and should be respected as such, but I don't think that it's divine. In fact, I'm, I'm positive that it's not divine. Oh! Uh, the rubber man, the rubber man, y'all don't know what you better ask somebody. I don't know if anybody listens to the Wally the Show out there right now, but y'all need to be tuned in! Okay, Fable. The Bible, uh, Jay, did I understand you correctly? Sure. Okay. <laughs> no, I know, I know what you're Well, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. You got to wait for me, Pastor Hans. You got to wait for me over there, okay? I know you uh, turned around, bouncing around in your feet over there because you got a Bible in your lap, right? Okay. All right. Um, You say the Bible to you is has like an effect like the Lord of the Rings. You know, I, I, well, I'm I think not. that it's, it's wonderful literature that has lasted a great deal of time. And it has, there are a lot of great stories in there that have that sort of, um, uh, you know, moralistic tale that we can say, what's the moral of this story to our children? And, and to teach a lesson that is positive, it's truly a positive, but that doesn't, that doesn't, it has no monopoly on that. I mean, there are many, many books 
Okay, so what about Jesus? What about him? Do you believe, well, if you say the Bible is a fable, then that means that you don't believe in Jesus, or what do you think Jesus means as far as the Bible is concerned? Well, okay. I mean, Jesus all is right. supposed to be so the let's Savior. Have a so first off, not all of the fables have anything to do with Jesus. You have all of Genesis and Exodus, which can be, which are just absolutely ludicrous. Like they can be disproven, and 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 it's not that they can be disproven in any way that science has to bend or jig or lisp or handle. It doesn't need that stuff. We can say, well, we absolutely know this isn't true. So that's the first part of the Bible. If you go to the New Testament, let's just start. Let's just start with. Let's start with with, with the very beginning. Let's start with the, the birth of Christ. He has to be, he's of Nazareth. He has to be born in Bethlehem in the city of David. And so there's this crazy story made up about a census where people would have to walk from one place to the other, even if they were pregnant, even when, and there's no census. And we know the census didn't happen. We know that those Roman leaders didn't exist at the time. But the story has to happen so that he can be fulfilling prophecy. So. Was there Jesus? Maybe. I, I don't know. I wasn't there. But Wait was this Jesus the prop, you know, prophesied in the Old Testament? It's highly unlikely. But we want it. As humans, we want to believe that. Okay. And, and even atheists want to believe that there's this really great, there's this super warm, fuzzy feeling that we can have. But what's the benefit of that? Okay, wait a minute. Hold on. The road got to meet the road. Oh, he said we got to take a break. Take a break. We need a break. I need a break. Go back to the road. Tired of riding the bus or asking friends for rides? Mercedes Thibodeau at JD by Riding may be able to help you. If you have bad credit, bankruptcies, repossessions, or are on a fixed income, grab your driver's license, your last two pay stubs, a utility bill with your name and address on it, and five hundred dollars, and head on down to JD by Rider at 5600 West Sahara Avenue. Don't forget to ask for Mercedes. If you have questions, just give her a call. Mercedes Thibodeau of J.D. Byrider at 702-772-6211. Mercedes will do everything she can to get you in a great car with a great warranty, too. Don't forget Mercedes Thibodeau at J.D. Byrider. If you are desperate for a car and a good one, too, just call Mercedes today at 702-772-6211. <laughs> well, I tell you all, I'm sitting back in my chair because I, I, oh, 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 the rubber meets the road on the Wally the Show every week, and sometimes I just don't know what to do with my own self. I get so twisted up here. I'm going to need some help from some callers in a minute because this is really something. Hello, Pastor Harris over there on your side, on my other side here. I got to talk to you for a minute, my brother. I need you to talk to me about the B-I-B-L-E. This gentleman says that the Bible on the atheist side is like a fable. And I want to know what does the Bible mean to you and that Jesus, uh, come on, let's talk. Let's talk about the Bible. Okay, well. What uh, does it mean to you? Okay, well, actually, you know, obviously. Bible means means a lot to, to Christians. Uh, we believe that the Bible contains the Word of God. Um, and to my, my astute friend here, um, I, you know, as far as your opinions or whatever is you know, concerned, I, I know I gotta, I gotta speak. My question you ask. You talk to me. Gotta, That's why right. you can elaborate. I, I, I asked you that question, so go right ahead. <clears throat> and we got a caller that's calling in too, so yeah, but uh, we, we, um, well, go ahead. We go believe ahead. that the Bible is the Hang on, caller, we need you. And it's and it's word what God says. We if 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 we can make everything logical, then we don't need God. And that's why God is is God, because he's bigger than our logic. If you can put God in a box as far as logic is concerned, and just don't simply use logic then you don't need a god that's why for the for the christian and for the the, the word of god faith is an, an essential part of how we believe and of course because we can get we can get factual and and logical and we can study whatever we want to study and we can come up with an opinion that god is not real and that uh you know uh, these are fables or what have you but that that's where that's where the christians kind of separate in the sense of their faith because faith is greater than facts to us. Although we do use facts, we do use facts, but faith is, is how we live our lives. It is according to our faith. 
Okay. <laughs> I know you need to take a caller, but I, I think that the, the good pastor said that's, that's the thing something is. that was that was right on. He said something that was right on. There. Okay, but wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm holding on. Uh, hold on. Let me take this caller. Okay. All right. Just let me see what see what my caller want to say first before before I let you go ahead on the day. Hey, hang on. Caller, are you there? Tell us your name and where you calling from. Uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. My name's Vern. Okay, Vern. Hi. How are you today? Uh, I'm just fine. I've got a comment I want to make. Okay, you're gonna make a comment. Yes, Is it about me? No, it's no. <laughs> That's the whole thing it's, that you're talking about. Okay, go ahead. Uh, first of all, I believe atheism is a religion because it's what you put your faith in. And I don't believe in any religion. I believe in Jesus Christ being the Son of God, died on the cross for my sins, okay? And it's a relationship. It's not a religion. In the Bible, it says true religion is taking care of the orphans and the widows, or widows and orphans, however you want to say it, okay? Now, religion <laughs> is not a good thing. God never asked anybody to have religion. <laughs> he asked them to have faith in his son. Uh-oh. Period. That's a rubber beat the road moment, Vern. <laughs> and if you've got to believe in evolution and a big bang, you've got to have more faith for that than you do to believe in the Bible. Because that cannot be proven at all. Okay, well, Vern. Okay, that's all I got to say. Go Vern. Ahead. Vern, my, uh, my, my guest, Jay, he's, he's just like itching in his seat. He want to say something. Uh, he want to talk to you real quick. So okay. I'm going to let him go ahead and talk to you for a second. Go right ahead, Jay. All right. Hey, Vern, I, I appreciate your, your calling in. I just wanted to clarify one thing, that there is no faith in, athe in atheism. So in order to, faith is something that exists without evidence. So everything that we have evidence for, well, that might be a belief, and it might be a knowledge and understanding, but it's not faith. And so to say that atheism has faith is errant. It's absolutely errant. And also, I would, um, I would suggest you check out I just how much of evolution has been proven. I mean, it's not. I have, there's I not. Have. It, it, there's me, I Vern. Have. I, you know, I don't know you, but uh, I, I can say that if if you think that there's not evidence there, if you think it takes faith to believe in evolution, then you may well, not, not have finished reading. Study, just the study of one cell of the body and all the chromosomes and everything is there. Just one cell will say. Just study that and consider the odds that just happening, uh, the odds are so outrageous, okay. it's almost impossible to believe in. Okay, well, Vern, I got to cut you off. I got another call on the line. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Wileena Show, okay? Keep yeah. listening, all right? Thank all right. you. Right. Caller, are you there? Can you state your name and where you're calling from, please? Yes, great day. My name is Terry. I'm calling from North Las Vegas. All right, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for tuning in to the Wallina Show. And do you have a question for one of my guests here? Yes, the first question is the second one. I'll take off here. Now, Jay, you said warm and fuzzy feeling. Are you married, Jay? He said, Are you married? Uh, actually, I, I have the the distinct pleasure of being divorced. Thank you much, and, and keep listening. They're going to give you your answers, okay? All right, go ahead. Uh, Jay, you're... you're I, you know, I, I'm, because of the air question, I think this is a good chance for me to go back and, and, and respond to something that I think that the pastor said that was ideal. He said, if we have all this logic, then we don't need God. Well, there's a reason we don't believe that Apollo drags the sun across the sky. And there's a reason we don't believe that Neptune gives us storms. And... We don't believe that because we know what causes the sun to appear to be rising and we know some of the things, many of the things, most of the things that cause these storms at sea. So absolutely. And you know, this is what what this caller is asking for is a is a very common sort of silly trick 
that uh, believers like to pull in order to argue against atheism. And you know, first, I want to say I'm not trying to convince anyone that, that there's not a God. I'm just here to talk about what I what I think and what I understand. Right. Um, but you know, to talk, talk about the air that I breathe and the origin of that air. Okay. Well, the air that we breathe is not like a big chunk of solid thing. There's no like air. That's air. It's it's made up. This atmosphere that we have is many gases mixed together, nitrogen and argon and oxygen. And we breathe this stuff in and we've evolved to utilize it in a specific way and other animals have evolved to use it in a completely different way over a great deal of time. And we use it differently now than we did a thousand years ago. And we know this because our bodies are different, um, not in huge ways, not in ways that are massive, like we don't necessarily have you know, vestigial tails or something. But what we do have is we have a better set of lungs now. So what you're saying is you don't believe that uh, that there's an almighty God, uh, superior being that is responsible for the air that you breathe. Point dot blank. The answer is no, you don't believe that, well, right? Absolutely, I don't believe that. Because the okay. truth is that the mixture of the air is not ideal. Uh, you know, we don't breathe in only oxygen. We're not breathing out only... we. We're taking in gases that, if we take in too much of them, will absolutely be poisonous to us, and we can get disorders in our body which allow those gases to be more quickly absorbed, absorbed into our blood. So I don't listen. If you have a God that's all-knowing and and infallible, and this is His idea of intelligent design, this feeble body, this the, not just the human body, but animals all over the world with all of its many birth defects and all of its many failures, then maybe one of those two things isn't accurate. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, Lord, have mercy. On the show. Have mercy on the way I leave the show. Pastor, you have a question that you need to answer. Are you prepared to answer that question, Pastor? Well, basically, uh, Adonai is just a different form of the, uh, the, the name God, uh, meaning Master um, and, you know, Lord. That's that's who he is. God can be called by by various names, but basically he is God. He is the ultimate. He is uh, he is the Lord. He is the Master. And and again, um, I, I although I can appreciate, um, I got to speak with you. Um, I can appreciate. Yeah, you do. Said, <laughs> <laughs> I can appreciate yeah. things that's being said again, uh, because there are there are many things that we can we can pull out when it comes to um, a lot of atheistic uh, atheistic views. Um, but again, for the Christian, a lot of it boils down to the faith that we have in the God that we serve. Now, we can get intellectual and, and logical, which, which, which is fine with me, but at the same time, it still boils down to, still boils down to what, what you believe in. Um, and so we believe as Christians, we believe flat-footed that the Word of God is the Word of God. What do you believe about the, the air that you breathe? I believe that that keeps us alive. <laughs> okay, but I do mean, you believe that it came from that the air is being kept here by the Almighty Creator, God, superior God, being? God is so He's so omniscient in how He omnipotent? created, omnipotent, omniscient, all knowing. He okay, knows. hold that thought. We gotta take a break. Okay. <laughs> Find some sponges, y'all. Do you have bad credit but still need a car? Tired of riding the bus or asking friends for rides? Mercedes Thibodeau at JD My Ride may be able to help you. If you have bad credit, bankruptcies, repossessions, or are on a fixed income, grab your driver's license, your last two pay stubs, a utility bill with your name and address on it, and five hundred dollars, and head on down to JD My Rider at fifty six hundred West Sahara Avenue. Don't forget to ask for Mercedes. If you have questions, just give her a call. Mercedes Thibodeau of J.D. Byrider at 702-772-6211. Mercedes will do everything she can to get you in a great car with a great warranty too. Don't forget Mercedes Thibodeau at J.D. Byrider. If you are desperate for a car and a good one too, just call Mercedes today at 702-772-6211. Okay, okay, go right ahead, Pastor. You you were talking, and we had to take that quick break. Go yeah, right ahead, I, I, I just wanted to talk about the sovereignty of our God and how great He is, and 
and even in his planning of the world and of human beings and humankind and so forth and and so you know we can we can we can sit, spend a lot of time trying to break down logically you know about air and molecules and h2o and water and animals and those kinds of things and yet at the same time when everything is said and done it's still in god's hands anyway it's still in his om omnipotent omnipresence his his omniscience is still in, in, in who he is as God. And again, I think if, if you can figure all that stuff out completely, then, you know, then you can figure God out. And, and the God that we serve is omni. He is everything. He is all. He is first and last. He's everything. Okay. i tell you what, I want to ask both of you a question here. Uh, I want to, uh, we're, we're not going to have m very much time left at, uh, uh, here. We're, we're just about to wind it down. And i tell you, when you get such a great conversation going on, great dialogue going on, then the time runs out. <laughs> But I want to ask the two of you gentlemen about the state of the dead. Okay, I'd like to find out what from the two. Now, well, well, wait. Uh, I want to hold that question for one second. You mentioned, Pastor, that the Almighty has several names. What What are those names? You said Adonai, and then what else? Adonai, Elohim, Jehovah, various names. Okay. All right. Well, the the Jews have you know like seventy something names that you, you can't write because they're all the name of God. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, I'm going to have somebody from the Jewish denomination on the show at one point, and I'm going to ask him that question. But anyway, <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, I want to find out from the two of you about the state of the dead. What the, uh, I'll start with you, Pastor. Uh, what happens when you die? Well, we believe that when, when a person dies, that their their spirit and their soul is, it goes to heaven or unfortunately to hell. As soon as they die? This is what we believe, yes. As soon as they die? As soon as they die. Okay. So the, the physical body does what? Remains in the dirt, remains in the ground. Okay. It stays here. Okay. And they have a spirit? Yes. And their spirit goes? We, we believe that, that man is a spirit that has a soul that lives in, in this body. Okay. And that when, when death occurs, then the spirit and soul goes on to be with you. Uh, okay, so this is a shell, and it's a, it's a spirit in there. Yes. And when you and when you die, when you stop breathing, then that spirit goes straight to heaven. That's what we believe. Okay, and or straight to hell. That's what we. Okay, so next week we're gonna talk about heaven and hell. Uh, Jay, from the atheist belief, what happens when you die? You're, you're dead. You're dead. <laughs> Okay. I, I don't understand. It's it, it's amazing to me that someone would believe, and I don't mean this in an insulting way, that when you died, you immediately went, you went to heaven if you were a good person, and then but when your mom gets sick and you believe she's a good person, you pray that she gets well. That seems like a malicious behavior if your belief really is that the best thing for her is to die and to go to heaven. I, I don't understand that at all. But that that baffles me. Ah, hold it, hold it. Okay. And so, but but it doesn't baffle me to say when you die. You're dead, and, and we're fortunate, sentient creatures are fortunate, because we can live on in the good deeds that we do while we're alive. We can leave a mark that way, and that can move on. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy, I tell you, the brother meets the road on the wild even show every time he come on. I want y'all to know this is some show here today. I, I've just been so excited about uh, my two guests, and, and, and I know Pastor Harris, I know you're just on the edge of your feet. You'll be back next week, right? You'll be back next okay. week. Yeah, right. you can come back next week. Okay. <laughs> okay. You say you want to come back I'm next week. Back next you week. anxious to get back next if, week. If the Lord says the same. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Allows me to live. Uh oh. Come on back. I will be back. Uh oh. <laughs> Jay, Mr. Jay, will you come back next week? And, and what will, will be your reason for coming back? I will be back. I'm really glad to be here with the two of you, provided I don't do something stupid to myself. <laughs> and God brings Woo! me back safe and sound. Boy, I tell you, y'all don't know, y'all don't know, y'all don't know. Why Lena just be going through the motions over here on the Why Lena show? And this is such a great show, if I tell you, I gotta say it myself. But I believe y'all enjoy the Why Lena show too when you're watching, when you're listening, when you tune in on KKVV 1060 AM. But I just want to say to you that before we go, I want you to make sure that if you really enjoy the Why Lena show, Go ahead and make a donation to the show. It really will help me out a whole lot. I would appreciate that so much. It 
really helped me to keep the show going. Uh, go to WileyTheTVShow.com and log on and click the pay button up there at the top or send your check of money order to 420 North Nellis Boulevard, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89110, Suite A3. And if I tell you, um, next week we're going to come back with part two of the Wiley the Show. We're going to come back with part two of non-denominational Christian versus atheism. Woo! Boy, I tell you, I get so excited about this Wiley the Show. This man in there, this little man is telling me I got 30 seconds. Well, my last 30 seconds, I'm going to tell you right now, the last 30 seconds I use to tell you to study for yourself. Study for yourself. There's so many different teachers and beliefs out here. You will be confused. Don't wait for the person up front to tell you what to do. Study for yourself. I'll see you next week. I'm looking forward to it. You better come back. See you next week. Thank you very much for tuning in to the Wally the Show where the river meets the road. See you next week. There's a blessing now in your spirit that this last program just gave you. Please take the time to contact the ministry that brought you that blessing. Be truly thankful and bless them in return. You know, often just letting them know is what keeps them on the air. And remember, prayer and financial support ensures it. Let them know they blessed you on KKPV Las Vegas. Join us for Righteous Moments Sundays at 11 a.m. with Evangelist Rosetta Thomas, Elder Willie Thomas, and Providence Ruth as they bring a right. Oh, <laughs>